So this is the ninth work stream. It's one of the five new ones that we identified last September when we had our last working group meeting, which was a totally uh, virtual one. Um, you will see this is far less developed than what I presented, for example, for the first one on data. And it's the reason why is that we just started working on it. It's a pretty new topic for the GTFCC, for the WASH working group. Um, but nevertheless, I'll, I'll let you have a look at what we came up with. And I'm very much looking forward to hear what you could bring to the table. So what I forgot to tell for WASH data, I will not forget for water quality monitoring and water safety planning. The people that have participated to the discussion are Omar al Hattab from UNICEF, Albert Reichert from USA, BHA, Tom Hensel from the CDC, Daniel Lantain from Tufts, myself. And did I forget somebody? No, I don't think so. We're also thinking of uh, adding to the group Marina Peter, who's a, a teacher uh, at a Swiss university, who's very interested in the topic, especially of uh, water safety planning. Pierre Studer and Claude Ramseyer, who are uh, secondies to SDC secondies to UNICEF, who just started at the end of the year, who are very specialized on both topics of water quality and, and water safety planning. And possibly also Jay Mata, who's now online, also working for UNICEF, and who has been working on various related topics over the last decade or more. Um, so now I'll separate the two. Uh, first, I'll go to water quality monitoring to understand what, what it is about. We all know what it is, more or less. We want to know if water is safe. Uh, so it's very important during a cholera outbreak to ensure that people have access to safe water. Uh, for drinking and other purposes. It's the only effective barrier we would have against cholera with uh, vaccination. Uh, as Philip mentioned the other day, it's not during an outbreak that we'll try to eliminate open defec defecation. It's not the right point in time. Of course, water quality monitoring, it's not enough uh, per se. If you see that the water quality is not ensured, you need to treat it. Aquatabs, chlorine, any other type of treatment has to be also complementing this. So it has to be at, in our case, po either point of distribution or point of use. So at the tap or at the fountain or at the, the water truck. And also if there is a household or camp storage facility uh, at household level. Um, just to mention, we will uh, publish a technical note on environmental testing that we have been uh, finalizing lately that also covers those elements and uh, should uh, be a great support for also this working group. So if the theory is very clear what what, I what a quality monitoring is about and how to do it, it's actually very, very difficult to implement. It's not only during outbreaks, it's something that you need to practice also between outbreaks. You need to practice this in any context, even in non-cholera affected uh, context. Water quality is something that needs to be a routine measure. And if you have it as a routine measure, then your chances to have it very effectively implemented during an outbreak are increased. So I think this is what we need to focus on and okay, if the let's say the concept is very clear. How do we make it work in specific countries, not only in the capital, also in very far out places. And this is where we're probably gonna break our necks, but this is what we're here for. How does it complement with water safety planning? Um, water safety planning is, is, is more of a risk management approach. It's uh, something that Switzerland is very strong in, for example, with protection of the water sources. So it's not, here we're not talking about water safety at point of distribution or, or point of use, but how to ensure water quality or water safety in the environment, be it groundwater, surface water, if it's a river, if it's a, if it's a lake or whatnot. So here again, frameworks and tools are available. WHO has had the lead on this for a very long time. Now there is somehow a transfer to UNICEF at the UN level. So this is a risk management approach, less technical per se than water quality monitoring, but sh they should both be integrated. That's why we bundle them together. We also noticed when discussing it should uh, cover various settings, development work and emergency response. It should cover rural and urban areas, very different approaches. It should 
cover institutional level, so how do we organize ourselves, how are our organizations working together, but also how to involve the community, because again, if the theory is very clear, the practice is very difficult. Now that we started the discussion, we said, okay, water safety planning, very interesting, but what about sanitation? We all know water supply is super important to avoid contamination, but the contamination initially doesn't come from the water, it comes from uh, inadequate sanitation. Of course, hygiene practices are also important, but Alex covered that field before. And also we could go further, and instead of just taking it as a planning uh, process, look at it in terms of protection. I, looking at it in terms of protection of the resource or of the water sources, you could also um, integrate uh, the role of the populations in, in the community-based approach, how to have them actively involved in the process. So as mentioned, this is a new topic. This explain, explains why it's very early stage of development. Um, we know that it's very well documented, the processes are there, there are multiple publications, we could present all of this, but I don't think it's the right place and time. But we need to really focus on, on how to have it effective on the ground, during epidemics, between epidemics. We know that uh, people are aware of water quality, in principle they, they are willing and most of the time able to do it, but the means are lacking. So we need to see uh, what capacities need to be reinforced, what measures have to be put in place, and, and how we can support uh, implementers with either equipment, material, and, and whatnot. And of course, link with the roadmap, how to include it in preparedness activities, in response activities, and how to, to integrate it in national cholera control <coughs> plans with our government counterparts. Oftentimes the Ministry of Health has a very big role to play uh, in water quality monitoring, Ministry of Environment most of the time with water, pro uh, water sources protection. There again we need to have that lens to further develop that work stream within our activities in countries. So what is proposed here, um, to quickly review existing guidance on both water quality management and water safety planning, to narrow down what the scope we really want to look at for the GTFCC. It might be that we can reduce, this is a huge scope, maybe we can focus on only part of it. Um, then define the vision, what do we want to achieve under this work stream uh, by the end of the roadmap horizon and define our goals for 22, 23, and 24, let's say. And then look at who here in the room, and I mean also the virtual room, and who in the various countries where we are implementing could participate in this. As said, we don't want this to be a global discussion. We want this to be a country discussion. We need to see how it works at, at provincial level, at cholera hotspot level. And then also don't forget to, to link it with uh, initiatives by others. Nexus is relevant because it's bringing, bring, uh, bridging development and humanitarian, but also all the discussions around anticipatory action led by OCHA, uh, concepts of vulnerability and resilience, standard operating procedure that we have, and, and preventive action. So, now the next steps will be to restart the discussion, maybe with some selected uh, uh, people who are very resourceful and, and knowledgeable on those topics, and a call to partners who want to be involved in this discussion. As said, now this has been an inception phase of a few months working on, on the work plan. Uh, some people might jump off because they don't have the capacity or they have other things, others might join. This is the time for us to, to see who wants to join forces. And uh, should this be the case, because we have noticed during these discussions, we are very willing to work on, on those work streams, but we oftentimes lack the, the time, if not the technical capacity to develop them. So we might uh, develop TORs and, and hire consultants to help us at least f for the first step so that we are already having some momentum on, on those topics. <coughs>